this is about um, an old greengrocer shop near where I used to live, um, which um, steadily vanished. Now another clock has stopped, and nobody can turn it back. A clock of seasons on a corner, measuring out fruit and veg. Decades scuttling to and fro, stooping, scooping into bags, oranges and origins. Spanish, they'll be right tomorrow. Crates on stone, bananas dangling, ruddy fingers judging spuds, apples, peppers, lemons, sprouts, summer grapes and winter greens. Latterly he sold outside, waiting, awaiting works for chilling months. I never stepped inside again, nor saw his black cat snooze on sacks. Then one day the light went out, boxes huddling indoors, fruit abandoned, slowly fading, iron scales now weighing out. Three greengrocer generations glumly grinding to this halt remembrance of wars and winters, carts and markets in the smog. Memories of the buried brook, evoked by bouts of flooded drains. Harvest stories, frozen up, now local history's trickle stops. Finally, the shops for sale. Appointments can be made to view. While somewhere in an old folks home, he's sampling vegetable stew. A bucket for his telephone, a chain of hangers on a door. Halfway up the threadbare stairs, a basin with a single tap. The ceiling sags and undulates, his bed is bubble wrapped for warmth. No bathroom, just an outside privy, hidden by a screen of weeds. The floor shrinks back from cracked up walls. Their paper shed like lizard skin. On the upright, stuffed with bills, glares the photo of his mum. Mushroom dank, these unloved leavings twitch and crumple in the night. Down among the browning peaches, tired spiders stalk the shop. The supermarket flogs me food, aesthetically modified. I contemplate the dying breeds one more thanks for all that fruit. Yeah.
this next offering is a is a what I call a found link. It's a found poem, and the poem was found in our old newspaper because I've been been heavily into recycling, um, and it's recycled according to a very strict recipe whereby you take a phrase across a column on page one, a phrase that you like, do the same on all pages that have got articles, one phrase per page, stir them up, ponder it, kick it around, and you might be able to extract one of the hidden poems in that newspaper. And the journal in question, uh, one that will be familiar to most of you, is a publication called Rail News stole from an office in Euston Station once, uh, and this one's called Grown From Seed. A host of Olympians in the electric trains are likely to be invited to see the telegraphists playing with plates of sizzling home-produced food and old-fashioned sweets kept in a plain brick building alongside the School of Electronic Games in Blackpool. Kent is being modified after being covered in bird muck. This can be justified by seagulls and seaside, but we need to think again. East Anglia would have been grown from sea. In addition, the National Railway Museum has been growing in the tunnelling under London because it offers endless natural beauty in almost every way. The move came after the refurbishment of the extraordinary trams to Oldham Town Centre across the country, returning to more sophisticated ways using the geometry of the curvy. very recent um, traditional tune. Uh, the next one, the two tunes I'm going to play now, uh, if you recognise you can sing, 
um, they're both old English traditional folk songs um, that have been reconfigured by other people. Um, here we go. If I was right earlier, and, and, and they did get a thousand pounds a week to run this place, and it did last for 200,000 200, 200, years, we could get quite a few gigs out of that, I think. We only do this next one here, we don't do it anywhere else anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim knows what it is straight away. Um, it's called an ASBO, don't it? Yeah. It's an ASBO. We have to play it here or sing it here. Um, uh, the, the, this comes from a, a book, actually. Um, it was it, from the six, uh, 17th century English playground songs. Believe it or not, apparently they sang this in playgrounds or various versions of it. And I'm going to sing it for you now, pretty much like as if I was in the playground, I guess. Um, if anybody hears this, there's no chance of getting a thousand pound grant. I can tell you that for sure. Well, they called him Nobby Hall, Nobby Hall, Nobby Hall. They called him Nobby Hall, Nobby Hall, Nobby Hall. They called him Nobby Hall, and he only had one arm. They called him Nobby Hall, Nobby, Nobby Hall. And they said he killed a bloke, killed a bloke, killed a bloke. They said he killed a bloke, killed a bloke. Killed a bloke. They said he killed a bloke. He did it for a laugh. They said he killed a bloke. Killed a bloke. Well, they jailed poor Nobby Hall. Nobby Hall. Nobby Hall. They jailed poor Nobby Hall. Nobby Hall. Nobby Hall. They jailed poor Nobby Hall. His cell was rather dark. 
They jail poor Nobby Hall, Nobby Hall, Nobby Hall. And the jailer's name was Jock, name was Jock, name was Jock. The jailer's name was Jock, name was Jock, name was Jock. The jailer's name was Jock. His keys hung from his belt. The jailer's name was Jock, name, name was, was Jock. Jock. You're allowed to go, name was Jock. That's kind of the idea. That's what used to happen in the playgrounds 500 years ago. But of course, in Croydon this time of the year, 21st century ain't going to happen, is it? <laughs> but you miss your chances to do name, name was Jock anyway. That's gone now. Yeah, that's don't gone. Don't do it next time round. No, don't do it next time round. Because I've forgotten where we've gotten to now anyway. <laughs> the jailer's name. Yeah. Well, they said you must pay, you must pay. You must pay. The judge said you must pay, you must pay. You must pay. The judge said you must pay. We'll hang you later on tomorrow. The judge said you must pay, you must pay. You must pay. Well, the parson came at last, came at last. Came at last. The parson came at last, came at last. Came at last. The parson came at last, his prayer book up his sleeve. The parson came at last, came at last. Came at last. Well, they hung poor Nobby Ho, Nobby Ho, Nobby Ho. They hung poor Nobby Ho, Nobby Ho, Nobby Ho. They hung poor Nobby Ho by his one remaining arm. They hung poor Nobby Ho, Nobby Ho, Nobby Ho. Well, they buried him in a pit, in a pit, in a pit. They buried him in a pit, in a pit, in a pit. They buried him in a pit. And they filled it in with soil, and that's the end of good old Nobby Hall. Nobby Hall. Thank you. start blues and I'll tell you how it goes we've been raising hell in Croydon and we went to bed quite late and I reckon now in retrospect we were in a bit of a state woke up this evening found I'd slept the entire day surfacing at seven heard a knocking on my head 
I was lying on my girlfriend and she couldn't get out of bed. I tried to pay attention, listen to what she had to say. She was mumbling and wheezing and I couldn't make it out. As I raised my head to lip read, she punched me in the snout. My body jolted sideways and she gave an extra shove. I rolled across the mattress and crashed up onto the floor. Then I got to wondering if she loved me anymore. I clambered up to see her, uh, but a bottle made me duck. It occurred to me round right about then that I was running out of luck and we wouldn't be starting the day with our usual fry-up. This is the Bad Star Blues, and I told you how it goes. I was smothering my lover, now I got a broken nose. Maybe this kind of thing helps keep the relationship on its toes. Thank you. 
Thank you, that is it, that is right. That was a piece called Angel, written by Albert Eyler. Anybody know who Albert Eyler was? Ah, well, definitely not worth a thousand pound grant. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim.